Hello everyone, this is Mabu Koga, back again. It's been a while since I uh, recorded my last video. A lot's been going on, but um, I just want to give you an update on uh, my new language list. My new and final language list, I know I always say that, but uh, this time, you know, for real, hopefully. <laughs> um, you know, like I always say, if I do make any changes, it's to... Uh, simplify not to aggregate or to add on so I basically uh, made two broke it down into two groups group one and group two group one are languages I want to learn at an advanced level specifically these um, I think it's called ACTFL levels intermediate high advanced low advanced medium advanced high and beyond it's what I consider advanced group two um, is uh, our languages that I want to learn at a beginner to an intermediate level specifically novice medium, novice high, intermediate low, and intermediate medium um, and honestly this group so basically the group one translates into first you know priority, group two second priority so you know honestly I might not even get to a lot of these languages here, you know, it's not for certain, um, but at least these ones are definitely for certain. That um, that's going to be my main focus. All right, so let's get on with the list. First, we have Arabic, Lughat al Arabiya which doesn't need much uh, introduction I'm sure you all know a lot about Arabic already um, I already speak Arabic oh by the way this this group doesn't include my first two languages obviously uh, English and Spanish but anyway Arabic I already speak it I would say at an advanced level but I definitely need to improve it um, you know, it's, Af it's a language of the Afro-Asiatic family it's a Semitic branch 300 million speakers my main focus is going to be on the standard Arabic or modern standard Arabic which is based off of classical Arabic and also um, um, learning classical Arabic and uh, to a lesser extent uh, my focus will be on Levantine, Egyptian and, and Sudanese spoken varieties alright next going to Cherokee the Americas Spoken native here to uh, the southeastern United States, southern Appalachia. So, alright, Jalagi Gawoni Histi, or Jalagi Gawoni Histi. It's an Iroquoian language, uh, southern Iroquoian, the only member of that branch. Um, it actually has around 12,000 speakers today, I'd say. Um, yeah, it's native to uh, this area here in what's now the present states of uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Tennessee, Kentucky. Um, the variants that I'm focusing on are Otali and Kitua, which actually are the only two surviving variants. Um, very difficult, challenging language. You know, it's uh, agglutinative. That means you basically make you can you can make one whole word putting using you know different morphemes, so different words to make one big word. Um, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah. So anyway, it's a tonal language. And it's, I believe, it's the most tonal language north of Mexico. But yeah, um, and uh, you know, one thing I should also mention about this: the first group is that, which distinguishes it from the second group, is that I have more of a direct um, relationship. 
with these languages as far as uh, my identity or um, yeah basically my, my own personal identity it's more directly linked to these not a hundred percent but but yeah there's definitely a link there so all right I'm going uh, and also I'm learning the uh, Cherokee syllabary which is used to write Cherokee going back to the African continent you have uh, Manding or Mandingo as it's commonly known or uh, Mandenka or Kangbe um, it also has its own script called Nko which I'm learning so this is a uh, Niger Congo language of the Mande subfamily um, around 45 million speakers, but I'm focusing only on Eastern Mandingo, which is the bulk of the group. Um, so that's 40 million. Spoken principally in uh, Mali, Ivory Coast, and Guinea, and also Southwestern. Burkina Faso, um, and small parts of Liberia and Sierra Leone. Uh, like I said, that's the Eastern group. The Western group which I'm not learning is which I personally consider a separate language is spoken in um, Senegal and Gambia mostly um, very cool language language of the Mali Empire um, it's, an, it's tonal language as well so the, like I said the variants I'm focusing on Eastern Manding which includes Bambara, Jula and Malinke um, my focus is principally on Bambarajula, which is um, the bigger, you know, which together has. So Bambarajula, Bama, aka Bamana Jula, um, is made up of the Bamana dialect of Mali and the Jula dialect of Ivory Coast and Burkina Faso. I should have probably filled in more of the Ivory Coast here because it's by definitely the uh, most widespread native lingua franca um, of the country but anyway um, yeah so this is a variant that I'm focusing on from Manajula which has in and of itself 35 million speakers into secondary degree Malinke dialect or Maninka of Guinea and uh, bordering areas of Sierra Leone and Liberia All right, and going back to the Americas. Uh, all right, so this next one is kind of complicated. These two should be uh, together, really, because I'm learning them together. Um, they both come from the same root language, the same mother language, um, which is a Yeri. But anyway, Garifuna, uh, spoken in mostly in Honduras and Belize in a small part of Guatemala and a little bit in Nicaragua too. It's not a Wakan language, has around 200,000 speakers. Um, it's actually interesting because it's a Native American language spoken mostly by people of mostly Sub-Saharan African descent. Uh, it was originally uh, spoken here in the St. Vincent Island in the Lesser Antilles, but they were moved to uh, Central America here, the Caribbean coast of Central America. Then we have uh, Taino Ayeri, which is a name that I, that I coined, or also known as Island Arawak. Um, by the way, uh, Garifuna, they call their language Inyene Garifuna. And this will be Wahiani or Eyeri Ariankoni. It's an Arawakan language to be learned alongside Garifuna. So basically, the language is being constructed on Eyeri, which is Garifuna women's speech, before uh, Biafran phonetic influence. Biafra is part of Africa, it's like the area where West and Central Africa meet. Um, 
using Taino vocabulary and grammar when available. So basically, um, Garifuna is really interesting. It really deserves its own video, but to be try to make it simple, um, Garifuna comes from Ayeri, but it's layered with uh, Carib, which came from um, Carib Indians of, from South America who colonized the Lesser Antilles. So as a result of that, you have male speech, which is which uses heavy Carib vocabulary, and then the women's speech, which is mostly Arawak, Arawakan vocabulary. Um, so, uh, but yeah, so this, but this language, Island Arawak, we're using the Ayeri language to, to base it on. And, um, we're adding Taino words and grammar when it's, when it's available. Um, that's, you know, I'm going to make a separate video about this whole project which I recently became involved in. Um, I didn't start it, but um, I was lucky enough to, uh, fortunate enough to know, to know some people involved in it, and um, basically trying to bring back a uh, the island Arawak language, or an island Arawak language, a Yeti. Um, but um, you know, since we can't really bring back Taino language, it's pretty much unrevivable. So the best we can do is use the closest related language that's documented and just add uh, the Taino um, the Taino words and grammar we do have. So yeah, so that's a long story. And um, but yeah, Taino is obviously native to uh, the Greater Antilles Islands, and uh, Ayeri was native to the Lesser Antilles Islands here. All right, going back to the African continent, we have uh, Swahili, Ki Swahili. Um, I yeah, I had to bump this one up. I couldn't resist it. It's very Cool language, very uh, useful. It's the biggest language of uh, Sub-Saharan Africa as far as numbers of speakers. It has 150 million plus speakers. Um, another reason I have it in Group 1 is because I recently found out that most of my African ancestry comes from Bantu peoples of uh, Central Africa. So it just made sense Swahili being the biggest Bantu language. Um, so yeah, that's the classification, Niger Congo, family, Bantu branch, um, spoken mostly in Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, the Democratic Republic of Congo, formerly known as Zaire, and to a lesser extent in Burundi, southern Somalia, northern Zambia, and northern Mozambique. Um, so yeah, basically these languages, it has official status, Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda, um, DRC and recently Rwanda. A very um, cool language. Um, the hardest thing about it is the uh, noun classes, though. Also has a lot of Arabic loan words, which makes it kind of easy for me, since you know I already have a background in Arabic. In the Arabic language. All right, going on. So that was group one. Now we're going on to group two, which are languages that I plan to learn at a from a beginner to intermediate level. So the first one would be you could take Maya or Mayatan, which is uh, as you can imagine a Mayan language of the Mayan family. Native to Central America, Yucatan Peninsula. Um, has around a million speakers and uh, making it the second largest Mayan language. I really always like this language. Um, 
it's pretty cool it's tonal um, it's uh, it was in my first exposure to it was from the movie Apocalypto which is pretty much what got me interested in the language but but yeah very cool um, so I I'm hoping to learn it well I have been learning it for a while actually but um, I don't know if I would say I'm at an intermediate level yet but I'm getting there um, so yeah, just um, as far as the colors go, so you, the dark red is basically means advanced. The lot, the medium red is intermediate, and then the pink is a uh, beginner level. All right, going further north, we have uh, the Mohawk language, or Geha. Which is also Iroquoian, like Cherokee, but of the northern branch, speci specifically Lake. 3,500 speakers, making it the second most spoken Iroquoian language. Um, spoken in uh, what is now upstate New York, or native to, at least native to what is now upstate New York and um, bordering areas of Canada. Which Canada, the word, the name Canada comes from Mohawk, Canada. Uh, very cool. It's also tonal. Um, very uh, polysynthetic language. Um, so yeah, like that. So yeah, making a lot of words and making it into one word. All right, next, going back to the African continent, we have Mende, or Mendehia. So it's a Niger-Congo language of the Mende family. Um, so it's distantly related to Mandingo. It has around 3 million speakers, mostly spoken in uh, Sierra Leone and Western Liberia. And Yeah, I'll, I'll get into the rest on a separate video I see from Mende. Very, very cool language, tonal language. Um, Alright. Next, going back to the Americas. In South America, we have Embera. Or Embera Bedea. Oh, I also forgot to mention about uh, you could take Maya that Along with Yucatec Maya, I'm going to be learning uh, the glyph Mayan glyphs because there's kind of a movement to bring back the glyphs and writing Mayan languages, which, you know, is pretty exciting because uh, it's the oldest writing system uh, of the Americas. Anyway, back to Embera, Embera Bedea, it's a language of the Chocoan family, around 200,000 speakers, um, spoken in Western Colombia. And east southeastern Panama, small tiny part of Ecuador. Uh, it's not really one language, but it's a dialect continuum. So, at you know, at the separate ends of the continuum, they don't necessarily understand each other. But my focus is going to be on northern Embera proper, as it's called, which has around a hundred thousand speakers, by far the biggest. Then, to, then to a lesser degree, Chami and Sia. But a uh, very interesting language, not well, not many people know about it. Alright, going back to the African continent. So we just finished uh, the subgroup of group two, which are the ones that, that, that I plan to learn at an intermediate level. So now we're going to the beginner level, the languages that I just want to learn at a beginner level. So this is a third Mande language uh, called Dan or Danwu. It has a million six hundred thousand speakers spoken in the Ivory Coast in Liberia, to lesser extent uh, Guinea. I'm focusing on oh, I'm, that's the only variant I'm actually doing is the Western one, also known as Blo or Gio or Gio. So yeah, this one is spoken in. Um, this area, the Ivory Coast, 
Liberia in a small part of Guinea. This is actually a very tonal language, um, one of the most tonal languages in the world. I'd say it's in the top five, maybe. Um, but yeah, I'll have its, I'll have uh, its own its own separate video, hopefully in the future, going more into detail about this language. All right, going back to the Americas. You have Huron or Yamenda de Wandat. So this is a this is my third Iroquoian language. Um, it's also a northern Lake Iroquoian language, like Mohawk. There is no speakers. Uh, well, okay, there's probably two speakers. It's in the process of being revitalized. Um, yeah, it's very another very cool language. Um, as you can tell, uh, I have a thing for your coin languages, um, also Mende languages. But yeah, I really like it. I just wish, um, you know, there was more speakers. Hopefully there will be in the future. It's native to uh, this area, what's now uh, southern Ontario, around um, you know, Lake Huron, Lake Ontario. Then going back to Mesoamerica, we have um, Quiche. I know it says Cacchiquel here as well, but I'm probably. I mean, I put them together because they're very similar, but I, I'm probably just going to be focusing on Quiche. She's native here to southern Guatemala and the highlands, also known as Cacchiquel or Quiche Chabal has around 3 million speakers, making it the uh, largest Mayan language and also the largest native language of North America. Um, yeah, yeah, very useful. A lot of people in the United States also that are from Guatemala speak uh, Quiche. Alright, going back to the African continent. In West Africa, we have Hausa, or Harshan Hausa, which is an Afroasiatic language, like Arabic, but it's of the Chadic branch. So it's, where, whereas Arabic was of the Semitic branch, this is of a different branch called Chadic. Um, this is the second most spoken, most widely spoken language of Sub-Saharan Africa with around 100 million speakers. Um, spoken mostly in Nigeria and Niger, but to a lesser extent in Ghana, Togo, Benin, Cameroon, Chad, uh, Central African Republic, and Sudan. So it's, it's a really big trade language. Um, but yeah, mostly in northern Nigeria and southern uh, Niger. You know, and also northern Ghana has a pretty significant number of speakers. And um, also in Cameroon. Um, very cool. Uh, tono, of course, as you know, most sub-Saharan African languages are tono. Um, very big language, use, you know, use very useful for... Um, this region here. All right, next, going in the back to South America, we have Guarani or Avanie. Let me just get rid. Of, I don't know why. I'm not. I'm not really feeling this hyphen here anymore. Let's put it all together. Yeah. So, uh, this is a language of the Tupian family. Uh, subgroup Tupi Guarani. Um, so this is the second largest Native American language as far as numbers of speakers after Quechua. Because uh, Quechua, I believe, almost has 20 million speakers, uh, maybe 15 at least. Guarani, this has around 7 million speakers, um, mostly spoken in, most of them are in Paraguay. 
you know, which is why I'm learning the Paraguayan variant because it's by far the biggest. Um, but also spoken in Brazil, um, in the small part of Argentina and Bolivia. So yeah, this is basically more or less the region that it's native to. And um, yeah, very beautiful language. I like it a lot. Very useful too. Right, going back to West Africa, we have Ikubo or Asusu Ikubo. This is a language of the Niger Congo family of the Volta Niger branch. It has around 50 million speakers, so it's one of the, it's definitely one of the bigger um, languages of Sub Saharan Africa. Although it's spoken in a relatively small area in southeastern Nigeria and to lesser extent Cameroon and Equatorial Guinea. Um, yeah, it's um, mostly it's it pretty much a lingua. It's a ling. It is the lingua franca of southeastern Nigeria. Um, yeah, I always had. I always really liked Igbo. All right. Then back to uh, Central America, we have Sotzil or Batsikop, which is a Mayan language of the Cholim branch, around 400,000 speakers, spoken in uh, what's now the state of Chiapas in Mexico. So, this area here. So, this is my final Mayan language of the list. All right, and next we have our first Asian language, Malay or Bahasa Melayu. Um, this one I'm probably, this one, yeah, I'm definitely gonna be learning more at a novice medium level. Um, it's an Austronesian language with around 300 million speakers. It's, so it's the biggest language of Southeast Asia by far, um, spoken in Malaya, Indonesia, Brunei, Singapore, and Southern Thailand. Very easy language, very simple to learn. Alright, and then last but not least, we have Tamil, or uh, Tamil, I'm not sure if I pronounce that right. So yeah, it's a Dravidian language over with around 90 million speakers spoken in southern India and Sri Lanka. Um, I w very cool. I always liked. I always had a thing for Dravidian languages, and this is the biggest. Um, and this one, I'm also gonna be only learning at a novice medium level. But yeah. Um, that's pretty much it. It's so there there are around eighteen languages. Um, so a few languages that almost made the list but didn't. I guess I'll start here. Um, Slingit of the Pacific Northwest almost made it. Um, let's see. Ojibwe is another one of this region that almost made the list. Tewa, a language of um, the Southwest, almost made the list. Oh, Muskogee, yeah. That was one that was painful to get take off of the Southeast. It's a neighbor of Cherokee. Um, which is also a language of... Muskogee is also a language of uh, the Seminoles. Let's see, uh, Nahuatl, which I took off my list. Um, you know, obviously, definitely, it's one of the 
one of the most, you know, it was the language of the Aztecs. Of, it was the language of the Aztec Empire. And it has now has around 2 million speakers still, so it's one of the biggest, most, you know, populous, pop, popular, known about, well known about uh, Native American languages. Also, Quechua, which I took off the list, unfortunately. Um, is is the biggest Native American language of all. It's the language of the Incan Empire in the Andean region of South America and also in somewhat in the Amazon parts of the neighboring parts of the Amazon too. Uh let's see what else. Mixtec of uh Oaxaca region here. Was on my list and almost used to be on, used to be on my list and almost made the final list. Uh, let's see, Chorti of um, native to this region where El Salvador, Honduras, and Guatemala meet. Very cool language. It's uh, it's the uh, closest surviving relative of uh, ancient Cholti, which would which is what the Mayan glyphs were um, written in. Close ones. Oh yeah, why you? That was a really close one. It's another Arawakan language. It's actually the biggest Arawakan language spoken in the desert region here. Um, very nice language. Unfortunately, didn't make it. We had Nasa Ua, which was a cool language in the Colombian Andes here. A lot of phonemes, probably the, has the most phonemes in all the Americas. Um, so yeah, that almost made it. Then we had Tikuna here, of the Amazon, the most tonal language of South America. Almost made the list. Also Niengatu, or also known as Tupinamba. From this region, almost made the list, but I kind of felt good knowing that I have Guarani, which is very closely related to uh, to Pinamba, so that kind of made it easier to take it off. Um, there was another Amazonian language, Witoto, which I was considering for a bit. Let's see. I think that's all for South America. As far as the ones that almost made it, giving some honorable mentionings here. All right. Um, you know, I really, I I do like a lot of European languages, but I really don't want to, didn't want to focus on. Or I didn't want to really pick any because for one I already speak English and Spanish what I which are European languages and there's you know there's a ton of people out there learning European languages so but I should say though that um, one that I was really into was Serbo-Croatian um, also Italian definitely French of course um, the Gaelic languages are really cool Greek, Albanian, uh, also uh, Russian, obviously, and some of the Caucasus languages like uh, ch like um, Chechen. Uh, let's see, Turkish and uh, Persian were close were close calls on my list. They almost made it. Um, really cool languages. Hebrew is another one that I was really thinking about. Uh, Amharic of Ethiopia, another Semitic language that was a really close call for me. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, Fulani, definitely. It's a really close one of this, of uh, Senegal. Really big language, useful language. 
let's see. I mean, <laughs> a lot of these languages in this region I really like, especially the crew languages and the Mande languages. But I just picked <clears throat> three Mande languages, left it at that. But yeah, in particular, this one crew language called Gere or We, which um, it's one of <clears throat> probably the second most tonal language in the world. Yeah, that that's that was a really hard one to let go of. Um, also, Gola is another language I was considering. It's very hard to get material for. Same same with for way. Uh, Akan I was kind of interested in, not that much. Also, Yoruba almost made it, of course. The Songhai language, the Kanuri language, they both almost made it. And there, <clears throat> there's a few other Chadic languages like Peve and um, what was it Azumena, Masa, which are really cool. Which I like Chad Chadic languages for some reason, but I stick with Hausa because that was by far the biggest. So I didn't feel any need to add any more to it. I'm just trying to keep things simple. Another language I almost made is Sango of the Central African Republic and to a lesser extent in Northern DRC. Um, really cool language. Lingala almost made it of uh, the Congo. Uh, let's see. Oromo almost made it of Ethiopia and Kenya. Luo almost made it of this region. Uh, let's see. Zulu, it's a cool language, very cool language, almost made the list. And to a lesser extent, I was interested in some of the, the Khoisan language or the Bushman languages, like Nama, but, but nah. I guess that's, I think that's all for Africa as far as honorable mentions. Uh, yeah, pretty much all the Dravidian languages like Kannada and um, Malayalam. But Malayalam is pretty close to Tamil, so I didn't feel that bad about getting rid of it. See some of the Turkic languages of Central Asia. Chan Chinese, of course, was on my list. Um, yeah, I like watching a lot of free movies, so I get a lot of these. Let's see. Japanese, pretty cool. Uh, Vietnamese was on my list. Uh, Pretty much all these languages here are on my list, <laughs> um, but a lot of them they already speak Malay. So also a few languages from New Guinea were pretty cool, like Enga, and uh, one that's called Mende, which is cool because it's the same name as uh, the other language I'm learning in uh, West Africa. But yeah. I think I was considering Maori at one point. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it, I guess, for the honorable mentionings of languages that almost made it, but, you know, not quite. But yeah, so hopefully I'll be making some more videos now more frequently about these specific languages and families. And, um, and yeah, um, I'll... See you.